I'm very happy to welcome uh, Peter van Bohemen from uh, Vag Society. Um, Peter is uh, the originally the founder of uh, a do-it-yourself uh, bio biochemistry or bio I, I don't know uh, so much biohacking. How would you say it? Yeah, bio biohacking is good. Yeah, yeah a biohackers community uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, and uh, now at uh, Wax Society, he's a program manager for uh, Bio Community Lab. And uh, he's talking about how to ad uh, address this problem of the antibiotics crisis by uh, open uh, access, by enabling people to share. So the stage is yours. Thank you. And the, pre and the presenter is yours. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, how is everybody doing in the tent? Good? Um, yeah? Yeah, because uh, I really enjoy to be here. It's a, a festival, so I always like parties. Uh, you know, and, uh, it seems like that there are a lot of people here that are ready to disrupt the world. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope that you also follow my talk and see how science and, uh, and biohacking can maybe change the world through uh, sharing and collaboration. Um, is anybody uh, already um, aware of the Vax Society? Do you already know the Institute? Um, well, no, not okay. There are not that many people. I see no hands, so well, uh, maybe a little bit of the background. We're an institute uh, founded 20 years ago when the internet emerges, uh, emerged, and we are researching uh, open data, collaborative models. Uh, we're not just researching it, we're actually doing it. Uh, we have this building right in the center of Amsterdam. It's an open space. Uh, people can come in uh, and do their own experiments, collaborate, and meanwhile, we, we study what that actually means and how that can make a real impact. Um, and I, I think we are really at a challenging time, and I'm also going to try to, ah, no, wow, this thing is really quick, uh, no, one back, okay, and now I'm going to share a secret, in the next slide there's a movie I'm trying to, trying to play, and that's going to be really the stress test of the system, oh let's go, uh, hmm. can I go one slide back, yes, thanks, so, what I, I also try to explore here at this event is this tension field that I feel. I don't know if you also feel that. That we are at this tipping point or splitting point where you know, old models of centralization uh, are in, uh, opposing the models of, uh, of collaboration and peer-to-peer. -peer. And that I think that it's all kind of the same problem uh, that's happening in you know, nation states, uh, universities, also museums. You know, that's the, the old players of the system, like multinationals and market-driven players, are having difficulty dealing with the new guys, and I think you know, that that's us, uh, the peer-to-peer, -peer, the, the DIY, uh, and the participatory movements. Uh, and I think that you know, this might, might be uh, the solution to a lot of big problems that we're facing, um, if we move in the right direction, and also, yeah, get to the next slide. Um, I, I think you're all familiar with this model, eh? the limits to growth uh, or a clip of, of Rome prediction model that says that if we go on on the path that we are following right now, so uh, depleting our resources, creating more waste, uh, uh, and yeah, having more babies, um, you can see that in all these graphs, at some point we'll reach the limits of, of our planet, and uh, there will be some kind of collapse of the system. And in this graph you can see the dotted lines, which are predictions, that the Club of Rome made, and the, and the solid lines are the actual numbers. And uh, yeah, if, if, we, if this model was right, and of course I don't know, but you know, I, I, I think there are reasons to believe that it is right, um, then yeah, we're heading towards, uh, an, uh, I almost say, a, apocalypse or you know, a limit of uh, what we can achieve. And um, yeah, so there, there's a big need for change. And uh, I think one of the things that could be on the tipping point is our antibiotic crisis. And um, instead of uh, explaining that myself, I made a small movie together with some students that we had, uh, and I try to play it. Antimicrobial Resistance, or AMR, 
is responsible for some 25,000 deaths every year. The key problem with the development, though, is the large investment needed to get new drugs to a patient. Only two new class of antibiotics have been brought to the market in the last three decades. This is not a health problem. This is also a problem of the veterinarian sector. And we can only solve this problem together. Contrary to what activists would have you believe, the antibiotics that are used for livestock production are not causing human resistance. We're producing superbugs that come through the food and then go to people and kill people. What worries me is that the people don't know. We know it and we talk about it uh, at these kind of conferences. There are many challenges to fight antimicrobial resistance and nobody on its own can address those. Therefore, there's a need to work together. I stopped it there because you say, I want to finish this sentence. <laughs> There's a need to work together. Uh, that's actually yeah, the only solution to this problem because you know, antibiotics, uh, everybody uses when they're, they're sick, but if everybody is only acting out of their own interest, they're actually damaging the interest of the human species as a whole. And um, yeah, they, you see in this movie, a lot of people are pointing out this problem, but they are, I think, representing the old world of politicians and multinationals, and we actually need you to uh, become active in this. Ah, yeah, just a few more examples why this is a big problem. Um, anybody heard about tuberculosis? Uh, it's important, this yeah, you heard about it, great. Uh, yeah, because you know, we're not dealing with that that much anymore in the Western world, but in the outside of the develop developed countries, that's a rising problem and multi-resistant tuberculosis, so uh, the disease adapts to antibiotics, is uh, on the rise everywhere. And uh, another problem is, that's also mentioned in the, in the movie, is that there are no new drugs being developed by pharmaceutical companies. And you can see that in the graph on the bottom left. Since 2010, there were no new antibiotics on the market because basically the economic model is not right. It's too expensive to develop them and they, um, antibiotics don't raise enough money. So the solution, let's go there. Um, at the WAG, we are an institute for uh, open science, and uh, together with all the lines of other people, we came up with a project, a citizen science project, where people can join in and develop new antibiotics uh, together. And it's called BioStrike. Um, these are some pictures of uh, laboratory, pop-up laboratories that we hosted uh, at other festivals, at the Future Actually thing in Manchester and Renew in Copenhagen, for example. Uh, and people could come in and, and start their own uh, research. But you know, who in the room is a scientist? Okay. So one person, not a few. Okay, but uh, most people say, when I, I sell, tell them this story, that science is too hard for them and they really can't join in. So uh, that's a big challenge that I'm also trying to solve together with others. And at, at the WAG, we have the Fab Lab, we have a wet lab, which is a space where you can do experiments. Uh, but still, you know, for people to go in there and actually get involved in this uh, project is quite difficult. So the solution that we're, we're now uh, trying to propose is uh, make it more easy to start your own lab. Um, so uh, actually this year we started a program called Biohack Academy, another academy. Uh, and, uh, and this is actually a free academy. It, all the tools are shared online, all the designs, all the materials, all the instructions um, for building your own lab. These are some pictures of the prototypes that we built. So we to, uh, you can see, for example, uh, a pump, a centrifuge, a uh, spectrometer that you need to make your own bio lab. And the cool thing about it, that, that's why I'm so enthusiastic about it, is that it actually spreads around the world. Oh, one more back. Um, no, the other way. Yeah, yes. Um, there are other labs replicating exactly what we're doing in Amsterdam. So we make a design, for example, of an incubator. And in, this is a picture on the top left of Sao Paulo and on the top right from Barcelona and in Rome uh, in the bottom left they start replicating the same device. So already in just three months, 60 people build their own lab and uh, can now, they're now e equipped to join in on this uh, search for new antibiotics. And to give you some idea of what it looks like. Um, yeah, oh, no, yes. Um, this is a typical example of what you end up with. Uh, you make uh, bacteria grow on a plate and look for antibiotics. Um, anybody knows which one of the, the bacteria is the most interesting one in this picture? You know? Which one? The white one in the lower half, the mixed with yellow stuff. This one? Yeah. yeah. So, okay, we have one expert in the room, but you're, the rest is not an expert. So, 
that's why you guys need to connect with each other and collaborate eh? and share these pictures on 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 the Virestrike uh, platform. And you can see that when you work together, eh, and a lot of people can do this actually. Once you build your own lab, you can easily grow these microbes. But then you need somebody like uh, Rudiger <laughs> to uh, to point out what is actually the interesting thing. And this is interesting because this bacteria kills off the fungi that is growing uh, around it. So you see this uh, yeah, circle around it that kills the other bacteria. So it shows that it has antimicrobial power. Um, oh, so to summarize, um, we are develop trying to develop new antibiotics together. Uh, and in the meantime, we're developing a project that's, I think, meaningful and valuable for the whole biohacking movement. Because so far, it's been kind of exclusive, it's a small crowd. We want to get more people in. Uh, we, the BioStrike project is really based on network effects. Uh, we, we involve scientists, artists, uh, politicians, uh, uh, legal people. And we're also trying to set a bit of a moral example, you know, like what can be done with biohacking for the good. Um, so yeah, I, of course, I have to thank a lot of people that are involved from all kinds of in, uh, institutes. And uh, yeah, if you want to stay in touch uh, or uh, get involved in the Biohack Academy or Virus Strike, uh, please uh, contact me. <laughs>